welcome to the second part of this arch series installation videos and um, to be honest i made a mistake when i recorded this last night and um, i've been thinking about this and um, i could record everything again and do it absolutely flawless but on the other hand that would be a less realistic way to do it because this is problems you will run into sometimes and I decided to add a few minutes at the end of this video to uh, correct that small mistake. I also going to show you a package I forgot to install during the installation because in the virtual box I only have one operating system and you need a package to detect any other operating system you have. But um, before we get started, you need to make sure if you want to do the EFI way or the non-EFI way. And during the installation, at those points where it matters if you do EFI or not, I um, talk about those differences. And because of that, if you do in the EFI way, the difference starts already in the BIOS itself. So that is something I have recorded with my phone in my own BIOS to show you what difference you have to do in your BIOS because um, VirtualBox itself can't emulate EFI very good, not even close. It's experimental and it doesn't work very well. So now we take a look at my BIOS and after that we go ahead with installation and please watch the whole video i know it's a long one but it's all about learning and in the end you will see the new clip i add to correct the issue during the installation the issue was that i created a user called admin which is the everyday user for the system but admin doesn't have the right to write files to its own home which uh, is a permission issue and we go through that in the very very end so let's go ahead all right this is my uefi bios on the asus motherboard a hero board to be exact so the wiki says disable secure boot which in my case means going down to boot and then the secure boot option over there. The default setting here is Windows UEFI. Set that to other OS. And then you need to go into boot option. And here you also have two USB sticks. Of course, it's, it's the same USB stick, but one is booting normal like that, and that one is booting as, as UEFI. And if you're going to install it the EFI way, you need to boot it with the UEFI enabled like that. Because once you've done your installation as a UEFI, I can show you here, these two are the same. This one is booting the hard drive just as it is the MDR way but I have an EFI installed so the BIOS actually finds my Arch Linux installed and just name it like that so that is what I'm booting of course your system or BIOS will be different but this gives you an idea what the wiki is talking about now back to installation so that was my BIOS and it might as well be different than yours but um, before we get started I um, would try to take this slow I know that some of you know many of these things very well and um, but I can't assu assume that everyone knows everything and I will try to make this as universal I possibly can but still it's gonna be impossible to make a guide that suits everyone so feel free to to just leave a comment and we'll talk about it and um, 
but first we need to boot it so you go ahead and boot and since I'm using VirtualBox I can show you the E5 version of it but as those steps where it matters how you do it I will try to explain the E5 way even that you're not doing it so this is what you need at the first regardless if it's E5 or not so everything guided on the planet say that you must check your internet connection so well we do that yay so that's because I have a wide connection and I strongly suggest you have a wide connection for the setup because um, getting the Wi-Fi to work with the command line like this it's not very easy to do to be honest many times you need a module to load to, to get the interface working but you can always check I know I I don't have it in VirtualBox, so look here. Nope, I only have the Ethernet connection. But if you have, you can take a look at my physical box. It should look like this. Here is the Wi Fi interface. And in that case, you can use Wi Fi menu scanning. And then you can fairly easily set up a wireless connection. However, it's much easier to do that after you have a working base and some kind of desktop environment. Much, much easier. But go ahead and try it. If you have a working wireless at this point, good for you. So, first of all, I can't use the English keyboard. So I load my Swedish keys, which is S, the Latin one, and you can list available key maps by going to LS, which is similar to, not similar, it's exactly like did in Windows. So you can list it in user share KVD key map. Sorry, my bad. Like that. Wrong order. Here you have all the available key maps. So you can load keys, space, the name of the key map. But do not include .map.vz. It's not necessary. So, time to take care of the disk partition. And Linux uses a very logical system for the disk. The first physical drive is SDA, the second is SDB, and the third is SDC, etc. And that is the drive itself. So the partition or the partitions of that drives has a number like SDA1, SDA2, and um, like uh, Partition 2 on the third drive would be SDC2. Very easy. So we need partitions on our disk, obviously. F disk space forward slash dev forward slash SDA. In my case, um, if you have Linux on a separate drive, maybe you have Windows on the first drive and Linux on the second drive you would issue f disk space forward slash dev forward slash s d b all right this is what you will see a lot of text but um, one step at a time you can always press m for help but uh, it doesn't say that much if you don't know what to do so we forget about that. Suppose you are doing an EFI installation. Then your whole drive need to use the GPT table instead of the old MVR. 
So in that case, you will issue G at this point to create a new empty GT GPT partition table. That would be the first thing you do. But that is not the case here because we are doing a non GFI installation. All right. So we just add a new partition. This is the first one. But for adding a new partition to the drive, M as new, select primary, and the partition number. In my case, it's the first and also the default. The first sector, you never ever need to change that. And here you can just make a little shortcut by using plus. And this drive is 40 gig, so I make my root 20 gigs, plus 20 G. And it's added a partition 1 of the type Linux of size 20 gig. You can always at any time print the partition table. Now I need to add a little information again. If this was an EFI install, the first partition would be a boot partition. That's the tricky part with the EFI. The boot is an own partition. And um, that one only need to be around uh, 100 to 200 meg. And also of a completely different file type. So if this is EFI, make the first partition let's say 200 meg is a fine mine is 100 and it's at, I think it's 30% used it's just a boot image I'm sorry if I mix things up by talking about EFI and not EFI but I tried to make one video for both scenarios which is kind of hard and the root 20 gig you can make root 1 terabyte if you want and have home in the same partition but that's there is no benefit with that whatsoever it's only downsides with it uh, suppose you want to install uh, some other Linux system or it crashes beyond repair your home is gone so make a root I don't know maybe 50 gig or something so you have room for some applications and stuff and then you make home on a different partition or even a different drive it it doesn't matter that's the good thing you can have it wherever you want because you mount it in the f-stab we'll get into that later so a new partition again a primary default number two default and we make this 15 gig type print to see what you have done looks correct and now I have 5 gigs left and I made that on purpose I do believe that most people have enough RAM to live without a swap file or a swap partition but just to show you how to make it we will do that but if you have um, 8 gig or more RAM you could easily live without it but we do want number three default 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 print the thing here is that sta3 which is now our swap partition need to be marked as a swap and you do that by changing the type of it t for type and number three which is our swap and we can press l to see if you can see it now it's right i yeah, that up in the middle, 82 Linux swap, 82. Press P again just to see what we have done. Oh, SDA3 is now six and a half gig of swap. W to write changes to disk, and it's still not usable. Actually, we have to make a file system which is NTFS, make file system, 
x4, which is what we want to do. So limit is quite logical to use. Forward slash dev, forward slash fda1. And number two. But not number three. That is our swap. In that case, we need to make swap dev fda3. Take note of the UUID number. You will see that all the time when you are working in, in FSTAB or and different disk utilities, basically it's a unique number for the partition. And it's used to identify that partition depending on what you're doing. So you might think it's pretty useless at the moment, but when you use Linux a lot more, you will understand why it's a fairly good system. So now we need to turn the swap on. Dev SDA3. You maybe see that if you type a command like uh, ntff, if you just hit tab, you it shows you all the commands that beginning with those letters. So uh, in the case, once again, with the EFI, the wiki will say that you need to format it as VFAT. It, I mean, um, that would mean that would fix our boot partition if we made one, but we didn't because, yeah. Now, we have made the partitions, we have made a file system of the partitions, and we have our swap set up. So, what do we do? We must mount them. In Linux, forward slash mnt is the mount point for pretty much everything. Quick demonstration from my physical system here. You see, I mount my windows in forward slash mnt forward slash win, and I mount some other drives here, here as well. That's how it works, and we get more, much more into that later on. So, then we just mount forward slash dev forward slash fda1 to mnt. That is our root. So now our root system is in forward slash mnt. If you choose the road where you have home at the same partition as root, you're done. That's it. In the case you have home as SDA2 or SCC2 or whatever it might be, you need to mount that one as well. And home do live in the root, that basic file structure in, in Linux. So we need to make a directory for that in our mount point. And then mount the corresponding partition to that place, like that. Now we are done. So now we just need the Linux system from a ISO image into a new root, which is done with patchstrap. And that is not a normal command. It only exists in this installation media. And it's basically just script to get the system copied. And we want to do that to our root system and it's the base we want to install. And this is gonna take some time. So now is a good thing to get yourself a cup of coffee or tea or whatever you might drink, maybe a beer. And uh, I'm gonna pause here and you continue when this is done. So now it's done. Now we need to generate our F stab. 
and f stand is just file system table. And that is named the command gen f stab dash practical use. Now, do you remember that identification number I showed you when we were making the partitions? So the big U means that it's gonna sort the partitions based on that number. So that's what that means. And it's gonna do it from MNT and we're gonna output it to our new system in the file fstab. Now that is done. So basically our system is finished. Kind of. Now we can see her root into it. Now the great thing with this is now we are actually in our brand new system. Everything we do now is physically on your new system. So all the English guys do not need to change very much the next points, the next steps we do, right? But since I'm not in England or English or any of that, I need to do that. LN dash S is a symbolic link. And what is a symbolic link? You can compare it with a um, shortcut in Windows, basically. You, you link A to B. And then it's an easier way than, than to just make another file. And we want to go into zone info and region. In my case, it's Europe. You can live, I have no idea what you're gonna choose there. And Stockholm is mine. And we're gonna add that to etc. local time. File is this. That was not the case in the earlier distribution, so I'm just gonna kill that. I and then make a new one with the correct zone info. So now it's time for the language, etc. And many of you might prefer English, or you simply are English, or I don't know. What you're gonna call it? Uh, some people like Y. Personally, I hate it. I will never be friend with Y. I prefer Nano. So go into Nano, etc. Locate dot dot yen. And here you're gonna uncomment the locales you are interested in. And the interesting thing is that the English one uh, where did it go? US that one that should be uncommon by default in my opinion but it's not so now we go down to my language which is that one Control X, same modified buffer, yes. File name to write, yes. And generate them with the, that command, local dash yen. And we have our locales set. Now, you saw the nano I was using. Now this is a little sidestep just because I came to think about it. It's kind of hard when everything is white, 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 white. So if we go into nano and the nano RC and all the way down and up a little bit, remove that one, save it. What happened now 
because you have nice colors. It's much easier to see. I can recommend that too. Anyway. So, what do we need to do now? I must check what I am using on my own system here. Um, yeah, we want a key map to the main, if you change it. Once again, the English guys don't care, I believe, but I care. So, we need to go into nano, etc. D console dot top. And in this map, I write key map and my key map and save it. That's it. And we want a host name, of course. Echo. If you have used the, the old DOS prompt in Windows, it's the same. Echo is pointed to whatever. So echo, I don't know, arch series and put that out to etc hostname. Done. A little thing here. In this case it will write that into a file called hostname. All right. Suppose that hostname exists, and you want to add the line to it. You do that. Then it doesn't create the file. It just append whatever you echo to the end of that file. Once again, a little side step. So, time to create our init gram. In this case, P is preset, and the preset for the preset to use is Linux. It's not gonna take that long. Yep. Now that it's done, and it's kind of handy if DHCP/CD. This is just a DHCP uh, common network utility, or not utility, but dynamic IP stuff, all right? You want that to start when the system starts. Otherwise, you need to start that daemon every single time you boot just to get your internet connection working. So this is a good thing to remember. Um, the way to control services in Linux is done by system CTL. This is system control. And I want to enable my dhcpcd.service. If you don't write dot .service, all right, this time it worked, but many times it's gonna say that you can't find it unless you add dot .service. So, now we need grab. Pacman dash capital S, which is install grub. Installing grub. And now we have some things to talk about again regarding EFI. If you are installing the EFI way, you will also install this, the EFI boot MGR. I don't need that because this is not EFI, but you have to install that package as well. Okay. Time for another sidestep. You see, I like colors. When everything is white, I don't like that. It's, it's, I think it's hard to see. So, nano, etc. pacman.com. You go down a little bit. 
and then up for a little bit. Uh, remove that one. Now you will have color in your pack now. And you saw that when Pac-Man is installing, you have these squares going going that way. Uh, just a little funny thing to use is it's almost like Pac-Man beating up. And then you just have to add Island Candy. And while you're still here, um, uncomment multilib because of this no big explanation needed you have no reason whatsoever to not uncomment those control x and save it all right now we are almost done we need to install Grub. I just need to do like that because I can't remember everything. Grub install dash dash target equal I three eight six dash PC forward slash FDA. Stop. In my case, it is SDA. If you install your Linux system on SDC or SDD or whatever it might be, obviously you have to change that to the corresponding partition. And not, I repeat, not something like this or that or this or that. Just the drive itself, not a partition. All right. And then you need a configuration file for Grub. Make config. And here we have the configuration file to use. And enter. You see here a lot of stuff. It found the Linux image and it found the init RD image. And now we are at the final point in the difference between the U5 and no U5. Uh, if you take notice of the grub install command here, that one, and compare it to the one you're going to use while U5, you see it's quite different. And that's pretty much it. You have to take I don't know the English words at the moment. Uh, um, I just show you instead. Suppose my EFI boot is SDA1. In that case, I would do like that. It's pretty much the same. I do like that instead. But on target, it gets different. Then you want to type like this and that EF5 directory and there your ESP mount and the ESP mount would be you see here usually boot and if you mount it as I said a bit earlier in this video it would be just like that boot. Now I'm running out of screen, so I continue here. Uh, it will be bootloader ID. You can, uh, I don't know, you can take uh, arch Linux, whatever you want. Because if you look at my little tiny BIOS video in the beginning, you saw that. In boot option, it read Arch Linux. Actually, it is this name that you saw there. So you just issue this, and 
modify the seat your setup and you have some uh, minor information more you can read here but as I said it's no super duper high-tech stuff you just need to pay attention when you're doing it now it can be a bit stupid to just have root of course if you want to only have root as user would be my guess but uh, it's not the smartest thing to do you want to make a normal user for yourself you do that with user add you see linux commands are quite logical user add user del user mod etc dash m make home i have no idea why it's dash m it should be h home but nonetheless it's m and you want that user to belong to wheel wheel is a group in linux you have both users and groups and the idea with that is if the groups have rights and for example maybe you make a group that the only thing that group can do is print files to the printer that's it all it can do you can call it print only or whatever you want and then you can connect a user to that group so it's like a template for what you can do or not and wheel is uh, administration group so um, it stood for nine or ten users it's 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 what you want as a normal user and you want a shell for it of course bash and here is your username i'm gonna have the unique name admin you can take whatever you want your first name for example and then you want a password for for that user sorry like that and also you want a password for root and since you are logged in as root all you have to type is like that so now we have a root password and we have a password for our user that's pretty much it and uh, just to prove that we're going to reboot the system Sorry. Reboot. And I boot the hard disk. There you see, there is a grub. Unconfigured and kind of ugly. And now it's booting. Ta da! R series is a host name. Which yeah, you see here and also in the in shell. Allergenous root. Here is our new system running live on VirtualBox. From this moment on, you can do anything you want with it. Usually, it means installing X and either a desktop environment. Or just a window manager what i'm using as you see overall here and here is open box that i spent a good amount of hours on to get to the point i want i'm thinking that the desktop environment we're gonna work with first is xsce very common very usual uh, popular as well and easy to get going but um, before we wrap this up I highly recommend you to install base demo oh a quick one you see the warning database file from what leg does not exist that's because we have remove the comments for multilib but we haven't synced the database for it so if you just type random syy 
you see the Pac-Man, by the way, going over there instead of the squares. And we have colors as well. You see now it's added multi-lead to that list. So if we go into that again, the warning is gone. So that warning was nothing to take notice of. The base devil contains the pseudo and a lot of utilities that Linux itself need to compile stuff and um, mainly compile stuff and then you will have a really shitty system without the base devil so note I didn't say devil devil stupid devil whatever and uh, while this is chewing on I'm gonna I'm sad to say this but I don't remember the exact address to Gout but we might as well do that while we are on it so we have Gout working as well nano etc pacman.com all the way down and it doesn't matter where you put it in this file yeah and you can take it I take it here it doesn't matter anyway Arch Linux SR SR like that Sig level never server HTTP And we need to sync. You see? Now it's added Arch Linux to our database. Which means we can install Gout. So, why do you want Gout? That's because all the packages that are made by the community or something else ends up there and you can find pretty much anything you can think of in the yard um, an example for that is uh, I don't know TUV TU oh, nope not there by the way that is the program I'm using to stream here let's try to save the yard instead Oh, I misspelled it. GUV TU. Oh, it's in the community. My bad. But you still get the point. It works like Pac Man. The only difference is that. Uh, you have a tons of more packages to choose from. <coughs> so now I don't have so much to say about it. We can try our normal user. Um, yeah. I forgot one thing that's kind of important. You want to use the sudo command. Sudo is super user do. And uh, that is used by quite a lot of, of uh, applications in Linux. I will show you here. You see, 
I can't run it. I need to have root privileges. Okay. If I do the same with sudo first, I'm allowed to run it. Usually it's going to ask for a password, but I have, I have removed that because it was so annoying. I know that some people says it's a bad idea, but I take that risk. Anyway, if you want to add yourself to that, and that's it. Now my user admin is allowed to use sudo. I can now I am admin sudo Pacman is one of those applications. And Pacman let's just ins uh, let's install here. You see I'm not root. But if I do the same with sudo in front of it, I'm allowed to do it, and you need to enter your root password. I'm not gonna do that because that is an X application and we are not at that point yet. X is goes out from the sudo. Or S SU. SU is substitute user. So as you see I'm root and I can take the identity of admin by substitute user. Now I'm admin. And exit takes me out from that. Just some small things to get you started to play. You see, when I start my terminals, I have this arch thing, and that is just arch3. Uh, capital S followed by a lowercase s is search the database for a specific package. Let's install that. Yep. <laughs> At this point, when we are going to install X in the next episode, obviously we're gonna need graphical drivers for it. And in uh, VirtualBox, it's just Mesa straight up, it's no big deal whatsoever. However, in the real world, you will most likely have Intel, NVIDIA, or API, AMD. In my case, where I have NVIDIA, I'm just going to show you which package I use. You can take uh, more information like that. You see. I'm using that is my graphical driver for the kernel and this is just a setting application for X I can show you which one it's this one it works flawless and here are utils it's what it sounds like actually and what I just did here with the Q it queried the database, but I think we're going more into that later. Now, on chip 3, look, it looks like crap in VirtualBox, but hopefully it looks better on uh, your system. And here you also see some info about your system, window manager none, Desktop environment none. What which kernel you have? Host name. 151 packages already. And now you see I'm only using 70 megs of RAM at this point. Now you see the why I'm not uh, thinking about uh, swap partition. I mean, this is a full system with all the bells and whistles and VirtualBox running, and I have given the VirtualBox 8 gigs of RAM. <coughs> and I'm still only using 
let's see here you see that Kibana's this I can't see any reason that was swap with a decent target and the route is only 1.5 gig so until next time which should be next couple of days I try to uh, I will try to make it in two or three days tops I would recommend that you play around with the command line I know it might feel a bit nervous or afraid of destroying anything but <coughs> you really can't you should try different commands like you see ls here list you can do like that instead colors and um, you can learn so many things just in the command line that you can easily spend two or three days just to learn everything not everything because that takes years but to get a hang of it and while I'm at it there you see the fstab there they are our unique ID numbers you also see the mount point for home and for root and the SD3 had none because it's a swap so it's not mounted to a specific mount point uh, it just exists and uh, you can prepare yourself for which drivers you need to install for X this is the NVIDIA search and if you have AMD it's Catalyst nope. so you have Catalyst or tanks of them so there is no way for me to know what driver I should tell you to install because that can only you know and in that case Google is your friend you need to know what chipset you have and uh, which driver to install to get X working I could install X now and get the graphical desktop in 5 minutes but um, I don't want to do that I want to take it kinda slow and get slow progress so you follow along <coughs> sorry and I think a good way is to play around with the command line to get a hang of it you have plenty of commands to get to know and uh, if you're feeling really high tech you can install this little program and then yes you can't do root but Why not? As you see, this is an IFC client. Oh, I don't feel like this. It's getting late and I'm getting tired feel free to experiment some stuff work a bit odd when I'm in VirtualBox as well so I just want to show you one more single thing <coughs> suppose you are playing around here the system won't boot kernel panic maybe you install grub ROM so when you reboot nothing happens just a dark screen or whatever just to prove uh, prove this concept you can make a directory called read system I have some crap in my in my 
around here. Now you see some things like the arrows on the S bin to use the forward slash bin. The arrows means it's a sim link, so S bin points to the user bin. Now focus on the real system directory that only exists in this system. Okay. Now we reboot. And now it will reboot boot our CD, the installation media. Now we are pretending that our installation is broken. You have messed it up. You need to repair it, but you don't want to install it again. What do you do? I can't really guess. But you need to mount it. That's all you have to do. Except for me that needs to load the keys again. So just mount your SJ1 to your MMT and our civil root to your MMT. That's it. Now you are in your uh, system that's on your hard drive. I can show you. Look, real system folder. Now you have every chance in the world to repair whatever you might have done. This happened to me not too long ago. I upgraded the kernel and the NVIDIA driver just collapsed. It didn't like the new kernel in any way, so I got the kernel panic and the system didn't boot. So in that moment you can get super panic and scream and cry, but all you really have to do is log in like this and Pacman capital U that is downgrade and <coughs> and downgrade the kernel to the state before the upgrade. And then when I reboot it again, <coughs> everything was back to normal. So it's actually kinda hard to destroy it once it works. If you just know to undestroy it. And uh, one more thing before we sign off. You see here, when I boot in this system, you don't see anything, but boom, here's the login. And I actually like when I see the modules passing by and what's it doing. So maybe you want that as well. Very easy fix. It's the grub file. Go down quite a bit the point where it's loading the kernel and that would be here this is the command line for loading the kernel quiet take a wild guess what quiet means load the kernel quiet gone save it reboot And let's see now. What? Now I messed up. <laughs> oh, my bad again. That's because you have your Arch Linux and then you have your advanced options for Linux. I just changed the wrong line. But on the other hand, now you know what's happened if you change the wrong line. So look, there is correct line to change. If you come from the top, it's the first one here. And you can, you can uh, as well just change this to Arch demo system, and you will see that in the grub menu instead. I was too slow. I haven't removed the CD from the. That's why it's dusty. You see, Arch demo system, and voila, you will have the. Well, that was kind of fast, but.
Clear to us. So, I'm not sure what else to say about this. I got it. One more thing you can play with. There is a handy little tool called Scrub Customizer. It's named like this. And you see, it's only in our. If I play Pac Man, it doesn't find it. So, there's many reasons to have Yout. But if I remember, no, forget it. Forget about it. Forget it again. Grab customizer users X. But uh, we get to that later instead. So feel free to mess around a bit, and if you destroy your system royalty, just let me know so I promise to fix it, and I will paste a link to this guide which is everything I did and talked about now also the link to, uh, to, 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 to the E5 specific parts of Grub and the partition stuff and that's that and while you're watching this is the open box so you get to that as well but I, I'm thinking of installing both Openbox, KDE, XSCE, LXDE, every single one. So, good luck now. Do your best. And if you get stuck, leave a comment. Write to Westbay Tech on uh, Facebook send a bird, do whatever you want. I promise to help and uh, I wish you the best of luck and see you soon. All right, this is the small clip I add to fix the tiny issue we got in the admin user and also the package I forgot to mention when you have multiple operating systems. So, let's go into home. You see, there is admin. You also see that I'm logged in as root at the moment. ls slash l. And you see that both the user and the group is root and root. Wrong. It should be owned by admin, which is my user. And it should belong to the group users. Then the admin would work much better. So, in order to do that, we want to change the owner, which is like that, shown, or what you're going to call it, the user admin, and we want to change, let's see, admin, show, admin, to admin folder, like that. Now we take a look again. You see, now it's owned by admin, but it's still the wrong group. And that command is very similar, it's like that, and the group is users, and it's the same folder admin. Now admin has a much easier life, and we're gonna try that straight away. Now if we launch WeChat, which we tried earlier here, wow, it can do it without saying, can't write to home admin. So that was a very easy fix and it's something you should know about the users and groups and all that stuff and uh, i was talking about the os probe which is a package simply i need to do root as well os probe prober yes there we have it the thing with this is that it's gonna search all the drives, not this drive, but every single drive it finds for other operating systems and then add it to your grub so you can boot it when the, when the computer starts. 
However, this virtual box only have this installation, so running it, it doesn't find anything basically because it's there's nothing to find. So we have to take a look at my physical system, which also have Windows 10. We do the same thing on that one. Scanning, 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 and you see it finds Windows 10. So when I'm just running grub make config, at least in this virtual box, there's nothing to say. It, it, it finds the Linux image and that's pretty much it. So we do the same thing, but on the system that is ES5 and also have Windows 10. Notice this command is on my ES5 system and this is not, but it's the same command. So once you have the ES5 part sorted, your system behaves exactly like a non-ES5. Now, it's going to find forward slash sta2 or something. Yeah, there. This is Swedish, which is found. Found Windows 10 boot manager at dev sta2. And just for fun, if you do a lsplk, you see sta2. That is the efi part of Windows 10. So um, to understand it is uh, much better, you have to read a bit, but hopefully this gets straightened out some questions you might have. So now I'm happy. Now we have a very functional base and uh, feel free to, as I said, fool around in command line. If you mess something up, I have showed you how to sort it out with the boot and mount and zero root into your system and sort it out. And uh, I'm thinking of uh, the next episode will be Pac-Man, how to downgrade a package and um, maybe X. I'm not sure about that, but maybe. Feel free to comment and... Um, if you find this video useful, so please share it, like it, do whatever you want, and um, I hope I see you soon.